right, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's 7 o'clock. Good evening. Welcome to the January 15th Board of Sewer Commission meeting, the best attended meeting in my six-year history. Thank you all for coming out. Um, looking at our agenda, we have one uh, administrative uh, task to do prior to op reopening the public meeting from last month. So Joe and Fred, did you have a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Yep. Bad. I make a motion that we accept the minutes of the meeting of uh, December 18, 2018, as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. With that said, let's reopen the public hearing. And as a first step of the public me meeting, uh, Jeff Howland from our engineering department, uh, why don't you give us an introduction, if you would? Sure. All right, I, uh, I'm going to assume that either A, you did not see the presentation that we gave at the last meeting, so I'm going to basically start from the beginning. Um, I'm Jeff Holland, DPW Director and Town Engineer. I also have brought with me uh, Andy Truman, Senior Engineer in the Engineering Department, Vincent Tai from the Engineering Department, uh, Bob Tzeski from the Water and Sewer Department is here, Kevin Mizikar, Town Manager, is here, and two representatives from Wesson and Sampson, uh, Jerry Schwartz and Hillary Laca Canoli. I know I, I, know I said it wrong. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction. We'll have a short little 30 second video, and then I'll get, try to answer some questions that we had received uh, either through email, through phone calls, or uh, that a couple of the members of the engineering department saw on the Facebook page. And then we will get into some public questions or comments. Uh, so an introduction is back in 2003, the town of Shrewsbury filed with the EPA for coverage under the MPDS permit, which is the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, phase two permit for our municipal separate stormwater or storm sewer system, which is our MS4. The goal of the program was to control peak flows, protect natural channels, wetlands, water bodies, and reduce pollutants. The MPDS permit was created out of the 1972 Clean Waters Act. The 2003 permit covered in general six items of focus that were required that we were required to meet. They were public education, public participation, illicit discharge and elimination, construction site runoff control, post-construction runoff control, and municipal good housekeeping. The town has been meeting the requirements of that permit and continuously prepare the required annual reporting to the EPA. The original permit was initially a five-year permit, and it needs to also be said that this is an unfunded mandate from the from federal EPA. Uh, in 2006, the town started planning for the upcoming permit as the original 2003 permit was a five-year permit, which technically was supposed to expire in 2008. Um, in 2006, in preparing for the permit in which preliminary indications from the EPA suggested increased requirements with no federal funding attached. The town prepared a stormwater bylaw, management bylaw which was approved at the annual town meeting in May of 2007 and is currently identified as Article 21 of the general bylaws. Article 21 allowed the town to have the legal authority to enforce minimum control measures required under illicit discharge detection and elimination, construction site stormwater runoff controls, and post-construction stormwater management. In addition, the article allowed for the creation of stormwater regulations, which have recently been vetted through uh, the sewer commissioner's meeting previously, and the ability to implement a stormwater utility fee under, under the jurisdiction of the Shrewsbury Sewer Commission. After several draft permits were issued by the EPA in the subsequent comment periods and revisions, the <coughs> EPA finalized the new MS4 2016 on April 4th, 2016, with an effective date of July 1st, 2017. There were several appeals that were brought by several different parties on both sides of the argument. An effective date was issued a stay until July 1st of 2018. The appeals, which are still ongoing, 
and are currently in mediation in the Washington, D.C. District Court. However, the permit uh, is, cur is current. Uh, they did not issue a second stay from the original stay, of, so the effective date was July 1, 2018. The town of Shrewsbury is, is part of both directly and indirectly via our membership in the Central Mass Regional Stormwater Coalition, coalition with, the, with one of the appeals that is arguing a portion of the required permit. The 2016 MS4 permit takes the original 2003 permit and expands on the requirements, such as more robust and defined public education and outreach, and spells out specific audiences and how often we have to be, be in contact with them. Public involvement and participation specifically outlined. Illicit discharge detection elimination program has been enhanced with a requirement to map the entire town's drainage system, conduct wet and dry weather sampling of all of our outfalls and interconnections, investigate and prioritize all catchment areas, and provide annual training. The new permit also changed the definition of interconnection that is now considered an outfall. These interconnection points, for example, are where the town's drainage interconnects with Mass DOT's infrastructure, such as Main Street, Maple Ave, Main Street, and Route 9. It requires increased construction site stormwater runoff control, review, inspection, and enforcement for construction activities over 5,000 square feet. Update stormwater management in a new and redevelopment by assessing and modifying the existing storm subdivision control regulations and zoning bylaws, and stu study the feasibility of green infrastructure and potential retrofit opportunities. Good housekeeping and pollution prevention requirements include the preparing and operation and maintenance of all parks, open space, buildings, and facilities where <coughs> pollutants are exposed to stormwater runoff, vehicles, and equipment. Also, ad additional catch basin cleanings and monitoring the volume of the sediment removed. Additional street sweeping in the fall, which is defined as before the first snow falls and after the leaves fall, which I'm not sure how that we're going to do that. Uh, evaluate winter road maintenance program and regular inspections and maintenance of all town-owned stormwater treatment structures. <coughs> Currently, the town has owns 250 detention basins. Um, additional program evaluation, record keeping, and annual reporting requirements to be included on in our annual submittal to the EPA. The, the MS4 2016 identifies three different additional areas of concern due to high levels of phosphorus in the water bodies in both the Blackstone River watershed and the Assabet River watershed. In general terms, land east of one, Route 140 drains to the Assabet River watershed, and land west of Route 140 discharges to the Blackstone River basin. The additional requirement is to prepare lake phosphorus control plans evaluate and prepare phosphorus source identification reports, evaluate potential retrofit opportunities, and, and implement those retrofit opportunities. Uh, we have five ponds in the Blackstone River Basin that we're also obligated to reduce the, the amount of phosphorus currently being discharged. Those are Newton Pond, Shirley Pond, Lake Quinsigamond slash Flint Pond, Jordan Pond, and Newton Pond. Did I say Newton? Or mill pond. <clears throat> uh, we have a short 30-second video prepared by the statewide stormwater coalition in which the town of Shrewsbury is an active participant. If anybody would like a duck, please take one after the meeting. <laughs> if stormwater pollution was about the duckies, it doesn't matter what went down our storm drains. But it does. Because stormwater pollution is not rubber duckies. It's trash, oil, cigarette butts, and pet waste flowing un 
contributed to the scene. That's not good for any of us because we all live downstream. Clean water. It means quality of life. Think blue, Massachusetts. We, I, we purposely put that on there because some of the questions, comments, and concerns from the public that we have seen uh, questions what stormwater is. Uh, I, need, I want to make it clear that this has nothing to do with the water system that we have or the sewer system we have. Uh, it is a third sort of, a, if you look at a stool, you have the water, you have the uh, wastewater, and now we have stormwater that makes up now the uh, three legs of the stool. Um, so I, I'm going to give a brief, uh, hopefully, answer some of the questions that we have seen, just so we hopefully some of these will answer some of the questions you all may have. Uh, what is stormwater runoff, and how is it different from water and wastewater? Uh, stormwater runoff is water from rain or melting snow that runs off across the land on impervious surfaces instead of seeping into the ground. The runoff flows directly or indirectly via storm drainage into the nearest stream, creek, river, or lake. The runoff typically is untreated and can come concluded with various contaminants such as nutrients, such as phosphorus and nitrogen, sediments such as sand and silt, pathogens, which includes pet waste and wastewater effluent, toxics such as heavy metals, volatile organic carbon compounds, uh, chloride such as salts, and temperature, which is the increased temperature due to increase Per impervious surface which raises the temperature of the runoff. Uh, stormwater obviously differs from water and sewers. Water is the, is the treatment and distribution of potable water for the consumption, fire protection, cooling, and commercial applications, where sewer is the collection, transportation, and treatment of human and industrial waste suitably discharged into the receiving stream, river, or lake. Why is stormwater runoff a problem? Shrewsbury is facing a new federal mandate to reduce the amount of polluted runoff, stormwater runoff it discharges into the waterways. Complying with this mandate will ultimately result in cleaner bodies of water, such as the, our lakes, uh, ponds, and streams. And in order to comply with this mandate, the town will need to increase its investment in its stormwater infrastructure. The town of Shrewsbury is currently 99.7% of the, of the land area is within the regulated MS4 area. Um, one of the things that was brought up is what, what are the, some of the, our surrounding towns are doing. Uh, Shrewsbury is 99.7% regulated. Most of the towns around us are not. Um, I believe Boylston is 10%. Northborough is only 61%. The area is based on the population and the density of that population within the town boundaries based on the 2010 census. Um, impervious surface, if everybody wants to know what impervious surface is, it's basically the pavement, roofs, sidewalks, anything that does not allow the water to directly infiltrate into the ground. Mm -hmm. Compacted driveways, yeah. uh, roof area, porches, Decks, if they don't have, if they have, are an unper or a, a, a solid bottom, uh, those are that is considered impervious. Um, at the end of the presentation, I'll have uh, Town Manager Mizikar. Uh, he'll bring up or discuss some of the questions that have come up dealing with. Uh, the versus tax versus uh, fee and, and those types of questions dealing with the financial side. Um, why implement a stormwater fee now? Uh, and the, haven't we always been cleaning catch basins? Yes, the town has always been cleaning catch basins. The town has roughly uh, between 7,500 and 8,000 catch basins. We uh, clean roughly half of those every year. Uh, the current permit that requires us to not only clean catch basins, we're also obligated to monitor how much sediment came out of each of those basins. So we have to measure it so it takes a lot longer. 
and we have to do more mapping of those and identify which catch basins have more uh, material taken out of it than others. Uh, street sweeping. We currently street sweep in the fall, I mean in, in the spring. It takes the town four guys, eight vehicle, I mean four vehicles, eight weeks to sweet street, <laughs> street sweep all of our, the town's roads and facilities. In the fall, because of the phosphorus, uh, we are obligated to street sweep tw in the fall. If we do the math, eight weeks would be we'd have to start in August to be done by October. We can't street sweep probably typically after December 1st due to the weather. You can't street sweep when it's cold out because the, the, it, the uh, water freezes in the, uh, in the sweeper. So in the town, at, it, when we start looking into November, is starting to prepare for the winter, se winter uh, snow plowing operation. We estimate that we have roughly two weeks to do all the town's roads in the fall. That's assuming we don't have this year where it snowed before the leaves fell, uh, which in theory would be in noncompliance. Um, so we have been looking at outside uh, contractors to do that work, uh, and we have been in touch with numerous other uh, towns who are in that same boat looking at doing it outside contractors to do the fall street sweeping. Uh, three years ago, we received a quote verbal of $250,000 to do the fall street sweeping. That number is now off the table as the permit has gone live and other towns starting to realize that they have the same problem and companies are realizing that they have the same, that they're gonna be street sweeping for everybody because nobody's gonna be able to, do, to accomplish that. Now, a small town, Boylston probably can because it's such a small area within their regulated area where Shrewsbury, we have to do the entire town. Uh, and just for clarity, that 0.3 area, acre or of the town that is not in the MS4 is actually in the North Bro Reservoir. So we don't have any roads in that area. <laughs> um, the, uh, get, get that one up. Yeah. All right, so in front of you is the, um, uh, the map showing, it's sort of a small map, but it shows the entire state of the towns or areas of the, of the state that are, are within the MS4 uh, permit requirements. Um, for clarity, Worcester and Boston are not in the, the phase two permit. They have their own separate permit. They're under the phase one permit. There is over 200 towns that are affected by the MS4 permit. Uh, Jerice, can you come up? Uh, I want to, uh, Jareed from Western Sampson is, has been working with uh, other towns, and I want her to explain what some of the other towns are doing and uh, what there are other towns that are also looking to do uh, stormwater permits or utilities. Um, yeah, so I know, I know, Jeff, that you had distributed some information on some of the fee structures in other communities. Um, I had recently been, been in touch with um, Fred Sivian from DEP, who's their stormwater contact there, and um, he kind of gave me a, a more recent updated list. So right now there are 11 communities um, in Massachusetts that have that collect stormwater fees. There is another six communities that have the regulatory framework in place but are not currently collecting fees. Um, and then I know at least of another three communities that we're working with directly to develop a stormwater enterprise fund. Um, so I don't know if you want more detail regarding those communities. Just briefly. Yeah, so I mean some of the communities that have fees in place, I mean, Chicopee, they developed their um, fee back in 1998. They were the first ones in Massachusetts. Um, Newton obviously has had a fee in place for a long time since 2006. Um, and we've been working with them over the years actually because they've, um, they actually developed um, about three years ago, they developed, a, we helped them actually develop a comprehensive um, stormwater capital improvement plan that was basically looking at the amount of revenue they were collecting. Um, <laughs> and they made some adjustments to their fee structure um, to increase the amount of revenue. They more than, I think they more than doubled it um, to better meet their, their needs. Um, so, and actually they just reached out this week again because they're looking to update their impervious um, area delineation um, based on more recent flyover information available. So, um, yeah, so I mean the communities that do have them in place, like I said, there you know, are times when they're revisiting them and restructuring them um, as needed. 
but there's definitely been um, more recently in the last few years, of, you know, a, a lot of additional communities that are really moving in this direction. Um, and the MS4 permit obviously has been a big driver for that. Um, but I think also, and you know, looking at other infrastructure improvements that they want to make. And um, I know certain communities have a lot of areas of localized flooding too. And so putting a structure like this in place will help them to better um, be able to have the funding that they need to address those, those items as well. All right, thank you. I think that's good for now, and then I'm sure we'll have okay. further questions. Sure. Uh, go to the uh, next one. Uh, so the purpose of tonight's hearing is to discuss the, the recommended fee structure and not the merits of the stormwater utility fee, as that was previously vetted at town meeting back in 2007. So up on the screen is our proposed stormwater utility rate stru fee structure. Uh, the engineering department, with the help of Weston and Sampson, over the last three, or probably three or four years, and actually probably prior to me coming to the town five and a half years ago, has been looking at various potential fee structures. Uh, it's our belief that this is the fee structure presently being proposed is the most equitable uh, to both the residential and the commercial uh, properties. Uh, so, so the first tier for residential is if you have an impervious surface between zero and 5,000 square feet, which works out to 91% of all Can Vincent, can you can you change the can you change the can you move it um, that way a little bit more? Try to get it maybe away from that. Gene, is it the light, light right there? You can move it toward Hillary a little bit. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but not on Hillary. <laughs> um, so 91% of all residential properties in Shrewsbury are in the tier one. Um, and the tier one also includes single family up to two family houses. Correct, and that works out to $7.50 a month. We are, uh, the intent would be when the water and sewer fees uh, go monthly that the stormwater fee would be added to that at on a monthly basis uh, we, we tried to make the uh, monthly 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 okay well, let's hold the comments and we'll go through it we'll answer answer the question that, that's a different change that we're contemplating um, the Commercial, we tried to keep as equitable also um, and, and tried to keep that in somewhat context with the residential where a small uh, commercial property would have the same um, residential or the same fee as a residential parcel. So a small 1,800 square foot dwelling with four parking spaces would be similar or actually be the same as a residential parcel. Go to the next one. So this, the next one is the fees collected by tier. Again, 91% of all residential parcels are in tier one. Only 77 of the roughly 10,000 um, <coughs> parcels are in the residential tier three. Uh, almost half Actually, over half of the small commercial properties are also, or all of, the, over half of all commercial properties are also in the tier one. Uh, the largest tier, which has a total of 30 parcels, uh, are probably the ones you probably, uh, Lake, Lakeway Commons, White City, uh, UMass over on South Street, Charles River on South Street, the larger uh, commercial properties. But it also includes the high school. Uh, this includes Town Hall. Rancho, 
Town Hall is Tier 8. Okay. All right. So we, we do have some examples of what would be considered a uh, tier, tier 10 for the commercial, and that is White City. A Tier 8 is Town Hall. Tier 5 is the Housing Authority off of Elizabeth Street. And then we gave two, two examples of Tier 1 properties. Uh, we looked at the, uh, the planets, and majority of the planets all fall within the uh, first tier. The planets being an older one, then we also looked at a newer development off of Beverly Hills Drive, and similarly, majority of those are also Tier 1. <coughs> So again, 91% of all residential parcels are tier one. What is the funds gonna be used for? Uh, we looked at the, the, the budget for the, the five year lookout for fiscal FY20 to FY21, I mean 24. Uh, it includes requ the requirements of the permit, which includes drainage improvements, Catch basin inspection and maintenance, additional street sweeping, additional catch basin cleanings, and other MS4 activities which we're obligated to do, such as public outreach, um, et, et cetera. Each year is slightly different based upon the requirements of that year. Each year is different of what we're obligated to do and what we're obligated to, uh, to, to do. We are obligated to start the sweet sweeping this fall. And we're obligated to start the um, uh, wet weather, dry weather monitoring of all of our outfalls uh, starting next year. So the wet weather the monitoring, we roughly have 750 outfalls. An outfall could be any interconnection point with, with uh, Mass Highway. It can be an outfall, could be a, a direct discharge to Lake and Sig. It could be a discharge to a swale that runs, say, to Westbrook, that eventually runs to the Mill Pond, which then runs to Kingsbrook, which then runs to Lake Quinsig. Each one of those outfall points we're obligated to monitor. Dry, in wet weather flow, there are certain criteria. Uh, we have to wait till it actually starts flowing out of the, the outfall po point during a rain event, and we have, we have to do it within the first half or after half hour, within the first half hour of the starting of the, of the discharge from that event, which makes it very difficult because it may be raining in the north part of town but not the south part of town. It may be raining on the east but not the west. It may be raining heavier in one place and not another. We may sit at an outfall point and it never actually discharges. So that is gonna be a very time consuming and uh, in which we will more than likely be required to hire additional part time to look at least whether it's a consultant, whether it's interns, however we do that, but that we're more than likely gonna to have to do that. Um, in order to, as part of it, we've also included the, 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 a flying over of the town every three years so that we can go in making sure that we are accurate with our assessments for each uh, parcel. Kevin, do you want to do the financial pit part of it? Sure. Uh, so just like uh, whenever we develop water and stormwater rates, as Jeff illustrated, we wanted to look at a five-year period to ensure that. Um, okay. Could you speak a little bit clearer into the microphone, perhaps? Thanks. So uh, just like we do for water and uh, sewer rates, uh, whenever we do an analysis to determine the rate and rate structure that we're going to use, we look at uh, a period of time, uh, most often five years. Um, and over that uh, period of time, we, we look at both uh, the peak annual cost and the average annual cost and uh, determine a rate and a rate structure that will satisfy those needs uh, for a number of reasons. Um, one, to provide consistency to the residents um, as you consider your personal finances, and two, to ensure that uh, we have sufficient revenues um, to meet changes in economic conditions and market demands um, related to the operation of any of these funds. 
There's been a number of questions that have come up relative to why is this not being funded uh, through the general tax rate. Uh, for fiscal year 2020, the, uh, the town, uh, any year, year over year, under the provisions of Proposition 2.5, are allowed to raise 2.5% more in additional tax levy from one year to the next. Um, for fiscal year 2020, that number uh, represents about $2,750,000 over the prior fiscal year. So it, it makes it nearly impossible for us to take a new expense, which is estimated to cost you know, be 1.6 to $1.9 million and be able to um, keep up with general inflation and continue to provide services that we do in all other areas of the town and uh, absorb a cost like this. Um, further, um, to provide equity across um, the different types of properties and sizes of property in the town, um, whenever we're providing services um, um, on a, a consumption base or a, um, a, a different basis, uh, for instance, you know, everyone would expect the same level of demand of service from a police or fire, and that can't be quantified. But whenever we get into an area like water usage or impervious surface that can be quantified, um, you know, it is the, the standard and best practice to assess a fee rather than um, add to the general tax fund. If we were to add the $1.9 million that this fee will raise to the general tax fund in, in its average year, that would actually uh, mean that the average single family home would pay $141.31 a year versus the 90. Uh, that 91% of the homes will pay. So if you look at that conversely, um, over 75% of um, homeowners in the community would pay more if it was funded through a general tax fund for these services than we would if we established the fee structure uh, that is being proposed tonight. So since we have the, the ability to you know, quantify the, the impact of each individual user or resident on um, the system and the service that we're being required uh, through the federal government to provide, um, we feel that you know, this fee structure is the most prudent um, uh, approach to raising the revenue for these services and allow us to continue to provide services in the other areas of the budget um, as you've come to expect. Good. Okay. Let, let, let me just make one announcement regarding uh, the earlier comment. As most people are aware, we're currently billing the sewer and the, and the water on a quarterly basis. But as of July, uh, we're, the town is moving to a monthly billing schedule. And so... Do we need the money? No, Excuse me. So... Um, there's a couple primary reasons that we're going to uh, a monthly billing cycle. Um, I would say th the most important uh, reason that we're looking to do so, um, first, first and foremost, let me say, th the amount of money that we'll we will raise will not change. That, that will be the same. So we'll, we will adjust rates to raise the same amount of revenue from water and sewer. Um, uh, but primarily moving to a monthly billing will put us in the best position to eliminate the town's unaccounted for water situation that, that you're probably aware of. Uh, we work, uh, we've been working and having conversations with consultants uh, about how to best determine the unaccounted for water, the sources, the data, the billing, the metering, um, and none of those companies will work with us unless we have a monthly billing because the lag time that occurs on a quarterly billing basis doesn't provide for ripe enough data for us to be able to tackle that issue that we've had. Okay. All righty. Hold on, hold on just a second. We're gonna, we're, we're, we've got the meeting open, but, but as far as setting the ground rules, if you'd like to speak, we'd ask you that you raise your hand. We'll recognize you. We'll ask you to come up to the front table. Uh, announce your name and uh, and your location, your your address, um, and, and then you're you're free to uh, to, to make any comments. Um, I, you know, I, I'll just make one personal comment, and and, and that is, you know, th this as Jeff mentioned is an unfunded mandate. This is something that's been in the work for many many years. Uh, I don't know of anyone who's necessarily happy about it. 
I, I don't know if there's anyone out there that is that has come tonight to speak for this process. Is there? Okay. All right. Good. Good. I would have been surprised. Uh, so, so where we are in our process as the, the the board of sewer commissioners is we have asked the town to provide us with an understanding of what our costs are going to be to meet the regulations that are live today on us. And the town has gone out and looked over a five-year period, and on average, this unfunded mandate is going to cost us $1.7 million on average. And our question as Board of Sewer Commissioners is, how do we divvy up that amount fairly and equitably? And we've, we, we've, we've worked uh, over a period of months to come up with the, the, the proposal that we've made in front of you, and the purpose of this meeting is, is to, to talk about that proposal, to hear different ideas that, that, that people uh, might have. Anyone who wants to make a cash contribution this <laughs> evening, um, you know, we would, we would welcome it. But, but the bottom line is we're not here to talk about whether this is, is, is necessarily right or wrong. Unfortunately, our hands are tied, and, and as the Board of Sewer Commissioners, we're charged with, with coming up with, with, with a rate structure uh, to, to do this. And that's what we're hoping everybody is here to talk about uh, tonight. So with that said, uh, does anybody want to, uh, to be our first guinea pig <laughs> or first speaker? Yes, sir. Please come on up. Grab, grab a seat or stand, whichever you're most comfortable with. Um, hi, my name is William Barry. I actually live at the Green. I'm in Building 64. It's a, it's a group of 378 apartments that were converted to condominiums in the 80s. They're older. I don't know that, I'm fairly certain there's not really good drainage over there at all. Um, but I'm not sure if you're aware They've already been talking about how, like, Worcester, Woburn, and Waltham, the rents have gone up 16% within the last year. Those people that rent out those units for investment, you know, they're just going to pass this cost on. This is not going to be borne by them. Um, there's a lot more renters than there are owners. I'm one of the owners. Um, you know, I mean, we're, you know, like, we're all, all of us are concerned about how, you know, I mean, every neighbor I talk to is, uh, you know, uh, uh, concerned about how it's going to affect the condo fee and, and the rents and everything else. Um, you know, the, the more we drive up the rents in town, the less people want to move here. So, you know, and the more people look at moving out. So that's one of that, you know, that's a thing I'm looking at, you know. I understood. Understood. I don't know, Jeff or, or Vincent, if we have any. How many units did you say? There's 378 units in, in the green. They were all built in 70, most of them were built in 73, I believe, maybe 74, 75, whatever. Um, the, the electrical panels have all been replaced. That was insurance, the insurance mandate. We, all of our owners were <laughs> mandated to replace the old panels mm -hmm. uh, that were, you know, fire hazards. But it's just gonna drive up the rents. Uh, rents, mortgages, yeah. whatever. Assuming that the green is the, is uh, one of those <coughs> the condominium units that because those those don't have separate address. I mean, they, there's address, but you are on yeah the, more of an apartment building yep. style. That would be paid charged a, the, the seventy five hundred. Assuming that it's a tier ten, which I works would out. Think to, it would be with three hundred seventy units. Yeah, which I works out to nineteen dollars a year per unit. I mean that that's that's what the town would charge the association. They probably would charge us twenty five just to make I, a profit off of it. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Un unfortunately, we don't have any control, control, over, that. control over that. <laughs> no, but but like my comment was just you know like it was there were people that were angry already about the the rents increased sixteen percent over the last year in Woburn, Waltham, and Worcester, mm -hmm. and there's other communities that, where they've gone up pretty substantially too. You know, this is just going to be passed on from 
you know, they're the renters, whatever. That is true. That is true. And unfortunately, you know, I, I don't know how the homeowner association is going to, to manage that. But as far as, as far as what the town is looking for, it worked out to, what did you say, 16? No, I think it's $19.84. $19.84. So, which, I, you a know, year. is still. No, a year. It's, it still costs more and nobody yeah. likes it. But I, I get it 100%. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is George Demake. I'm um, from St. Nicholas Church on 34 Gold Street. And um, my, my question is, will the board be considering, will the town be considering any sort of mitigation credit towards um, properties with existing sort of um, stormwater mitigation processes like detention areas, uh, storm basins, um, dry wells, um, gutters from roofs that go directly into the ground. Will there be any sort of evaluation of businesses such as that or? Great, great, great question. Yeah, yeah so, so we, have the, we have a credit policy mm -hmm. that um, I believe is on the website such that if, you, if your stormwater system exceeded the minimum requirements of the uh, stormwater uh, DEP stormwater guidelines, then a, uh, submit a uh, credit application to the t to the engineering department. Okay. We we'll evaluate it and then uh, look. We will we'll look at each one individually. Okay, and that can be found on the town's website. Yeah, the credit uh, uh, policy is on the website. Okay, uh, but you can call the engineering department if you can't find it. Okay. Yeah, there is a limit up to 50 percent. Okay, but great. Right. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'm Jean Ranker. I live at 650 Grafton Street. Um, my concern is, what kind of controls are going to be put on these rates? Are they going to be raised at a certain percent every year? Um, you never find them going down, as history shows us. It always shows us progressing worth. And I'm just wondering where we're going to find ourselves five years from now with these rates. Good question. The first five years of the permit are pretty set. We know what the requ our requirements are. After year five into year six, we won't know what that is until year four because that the first five years are the evaluation period in which we have to determine what's the cause of our phosphorus problem. And then year six is when we actually have to start doing projects to reduce the phosphorus. The first, as I said, the first five years are pretty set. We believe that these, what we have outlined are good numbers. I'll be honest, year six, we're not sure. So like on the taxes, there's a two and a half regulation. Is there going to be any kind of regulation over this? Unfortunately, we don't know what that cost is going to be. And we'll end up with it. We will have, there'll be another public hearing at the sewer commissioners at that time. And it, we may end up finding that our system is in as bad condition as what some communities are actually seeing or thinking. Uh, we don't know at this point. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Robert Prue, Francis Ave. Um, I have two, two questions, actually. The first one, um, if we go to a monthly billing cycle for water and sewer, your administrative costs are going to go up three times what they currently are. So obviously you're going to have to pay more for that. I mean, every time a, a piece of paper moves from one hand to another, it costs more to do it. So obviously that's out the window of, of that not costing us more money. And secondly, looking at the, the items that the EPA is mandating us to do has nothing, will have no effect on correcting oil or, um, or phosphorus in the water. 
we're going to be cleaning out storm drains. All oil and phosphorus is in the water, not in the, the heavy stuff that settles at the bottom of storm drains. The only way that we're going to be able to, to fix that is with a water treatment facility, a massive water treatment facility. So all of this money is just going to, it's going to be like trying to clean up an oil spill by raking the sand at the bottom of the ocean. So I don't know how any of this is going to help the town at all. Thank you. Uh, John Lukacs, uh, for Bunker Hill Road, Shrewsbury. Um, the question about the the fact that this is an unfunded uh, unfunded mandate from, I guess, both the federal and state governments, uh, to me, makes it sound like it would this would certainly be a candidate for at least the town to have the opportunity to decide whether it wants a Proposition two and a half override. Now, I just heard the town manager say that, that if we did that, that would actually cost the average a homeowner more than those fees. Uh, I beg to defer if we, if we ended up, uh, instead of having one alternative or the other, we combined them. Almost every uh, property has a base fee of at least $90 with the exception of a few small uh, unimproved properties. So we could take the $90, which is, will be approximately half of the total, and we could put that in, in and ask for an override for that for about a million dollars, let's call it. That million dollars would be, the town would have, the, uh, if we put that before the voters and it passes, that would end up going into our property tax bill. And, the, and in doing that, then only the people who have higher, more than the minimum, the, the zero to 5,000 uh, square feet, only those people would end up having to pay uh, the rate, the utility rate for the, uh, for that material, for that, uh, for the, for their excess uh, property that with, with the impervious property, excuse me. So that would solve that problem. And you say, okay, so why would we want to do that? One obvious advantage for, for those homeowners who pay mortgages, uh, if you're paying 90 or $100 extra a year, uh, if as a utility, you don't get any uh, tax benefit or much of any tax benefit. However, if it's in your, if it's part of uh, your, in your, um, your property taxes, then you can get a tax credit, uh, and a tax deduction, I should say, uh, from the federal government of whatever your tax rate, hap your marginal tax rate happens to be. So certainly that would be some small benefit that would mitigate the, the problem, uh, the cost of this to some extent. Since the federal government is imposing this uh, unfunded mandate, why don't we do the best we can to uh, get some of that money back, at least for our, for our residents? So to me, I don't see why you can't do both. Give everybody who's, uh, you know, the $90, everybody, you, you, you at least offer the town that opportunity, a million dollar override specifically for this purpose. And the additional revenues that are needed, you impose, you, you adjust the, uh, the rates. People who with less than five thousand in, in the uh, impervious area would would pay would have no rates, and people above that would have the the, uh, the rates you show there adjusted for those. The fact that they've already got ninety dollars in their in their in their tax bill. Mm -hmm. I don't see why that couldn't work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, John. Oh, one other, I'm sorry. One other thing. Will the will the uh, st stormwater department actually be a separate department with its own uh, accounting structure so that we can see exactly, uh, be able to compare, you know, how much is being generated in revenues and being able to measure that against the, uh, uh, you know, what, what the costs are being, that are being incurred because I'm not sure whether they're going to be under the storm, de uh, the, the sewer department and if they're going to be, you know, people working in both departments, how those allocations are going to work, I think that's very important for people to know. Otherwise, 
you know, we don't, we have no accounting for, for whether all the money that's being used, being collected for this purpose is going specifically for stormwater or for some other unrelated purpose. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you for the question. Uh, we are, will propose uh, at this point, uh, or I, I am proposing that we have a warrant article at the town meeting to establish an enterprise fund for stormwater purposes. So it would be separately accounted for outside of the general fund for transparency purposes as you've explained. Tom Duhani, Bridal Path. Okay. Question regarding the proposed budget. It appears that most of the tasks now being proposed are being currently handled by the DPW budget. Mm -hmm. So what will happen to those funds? Are uh, those gonna be reverted to another project or to another department? And it also it appears that some of these tasks being proposed like the flyover, it's not only, it will not only benefit single department, it would benefit the assessor's office, the engineering department. So why is it, it seems that everything now is being shift mm -hmm. to this uh, enterprise fund because it's a new new toy. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's, that's a new, uh, that will reduce some of the costs. And also some of the infrastructure uh, up, upgrades currently being done by the highway department or by the DPW, that's also being taken away from them. So. What's going to happen to those to those funds? Well, let's let's answer those. Those are very good questions. Because currently, they are, I think most of those are being done under Chapter uh, 90, which is uh, uh, state aid. Well, uh, obviously, the spring sweep street sweeping is being done by the DPW. However, the fall street sweeping is is a new cost that we're incurring. But to your point, there are some, and and Jeff or Kevin. You're right, so the street sweeping, fall street sweeping is an additional cost. The additional catch basin cleaning and reporting is another additional cost. Uh, the detention basin inspection, required detention basin inspection and maintenance is an additional cost that we have not done in the past. Uh, we do not do drainage improvements under Chapter 90. We have never done chapter, uh, drainage improvements under Chapter 90. Um, we do occasionally do drainage improvements through the general fund, but we've only done, since I've been here, we've only done it once. Um, and um, the other activities and reporting activities are all new and are not uh, part of the what we already currently do. But storm drainage improvements are part of the infrastructure, part of the roadway. When you build a roadway, you, you install drainage. So that should be part of that roadway construction cost. Right, but we have not done roadway improvement. We have not done drainage improvements under Chapter 90. We have not used, used Chapter 90 money for improvements. I, I guess my point is that that should fall under the preview of the DPW and not under the uh, wastewater uh, management uh, or the proposed uh, the, uh, the, the, the new uh, permit requires management. us to do additional drainage improvements i.e. we have to go out and, and we have to evaluate every catch basin, determine if it meets the current standards. Majority of our catch basins built prior to the 1980s are the old style, whether they're barrel block, whether they have no sumps or less than the four foot sump. If they are less than the four foot sump, we are obligated to come up with a plan and a time frame under the permit to change those out and put in the current standards. Uh, and that would be part of, paid for as part of this the drainage improvements. So that's part, part of our process is, we, we understand that there are some activities that are going on or have been going on for a while and it's funded through the, the general tax rate, if you will, and, and we're trying to figure out which additional costs need to, and, and then we need to allocate the right costs to the stormwater utility. But this stormwater management fee looks like it's geared towards the homeowners and commercial properties discharges from those right. properties. The uh, stormwater collection system that's in, within the roadway system should not fall, should not be the responsibility of the homeowners or the business owners. It should be under the DPW or the town. Does that make sense? Um, I, I think we... You cannot have roads without drainage. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. And, but what we're, what we're talking here, if I understand Jeff correctly, is we're talking about making improvements to existing. If somebody puts in a brand new road, that doesn't fall under the stormwater. Okay. 
So, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, my name is uh, Lou Farina. I live on Francis Avenue. And uh, I have a couple of questions and comments about, about this. Uh, a utility, and uh, when you use a utility, you get uh, billed based on what you use. And I don't see in how you're going to bill these costs any relationship between use and what you pay. So I don't see this as a utility fee, utility fee at all. Uh, the other thing, I've, other, other things I've noticed is uh, if you're going to do it based on, let's say, the size of somebody's roof, so uh, there's a foundation we have impervious. Well, some people have two family, uh, two floors. Some people have a single floor. So if I have a bigger house and I have two floors with the same roof, you live in a smaller house, one floor, we're, we're being treated the same. But the roof, the roof, roof is area the is the same area. Same area that you're getting. So the fact it's, that it's one story or two story, I'm not sure how, how do you right. see Right, well, the that? point is it's a... It's a there could be more people living there, more and so forth. You're not you're measuring a roof size, but n not giving any any uh, consideration to the fact that it's a bigger house. A if, tall, this, if this if this is if this is a so that could this could be a regressive tax that people with smaller homes can be paying as much as people with bigger homes. If this were to be put into our real estate taxes, it would not, it would be more progressive. It would not be charging people with smaller homes the same amount pe with people with bigger homes. The final observation I have also is this. My property is big enough that all the water that flows off my driveway and off my roof stays right on my property and goes into the ground. There are people on my street whose houses are raised, their driveways go down this way. They have um, the gutters from their house feed onto their driveway and all the water, you can see this, all the water comes down and goes into the street and into the sewer system. So in this situation, I don't make any demands on the sewer system. I have enough property that it goes into the ground, whereas somebody across the street is letting it go down into the street and into the sewer. Everything I've just said, in addition to Proposition 2 and a half, makes a case for not charging people the way you guys are planning on charging them, that this should be part of property taxes and subject to Proposition 2 and a half. So, so Mr. Farina, I I explain to me your second scenario, okay, where you all of the rainwater on your property goes into the groundwater. It goes, in, it goes on into my the property. Ground. My property. The ground okay. The second property where the downspouts go into the driveway and then down into the sewers. Storm ha drains. Storm drains. Storm drains. How does doing the property tax methodology that you're proposing make that any more fair than oh, the uh, one that we've proposed here? I'm not, I'm, all I'm saying is that in one case, I'm not making any demands on the, the street, the street water, and Understood. somebody else is. Understood. And you're not account, the, way you're, you're, the way you're billing this is not accounting for that. No, I, and I, I see that point on your first scenario. But on your second scenario, if we implement your proposed okay. plan, which is to do it through the taxes, I don't see how that helps with, the, with your neighbor who has the water going down the driveway. Well, the other overriding consideration okay. here is once you establish this fee, it's going to go up and up and up out of control. If it's part of Proposition 2 and a half, be part of the regular budget, you will have to keep this cost under control. It, it would certainly have a certain constraining effect. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Mr. Riley. Yeah. If I may, the, the, the one thing that um, from a previous question, if you build this into the tax rate, it's going to be subject to 2.5% increase every year, where this fee will only be based upon the requirements of the, the stormwater utility and, and our operating costs. 
um, which for the first five years, uh, based upon our analysis to date, will remain flat. So as soon as you introduce it into your tax rate, you're going to get a 2.5% increase on an annual basis. So starting off with uh, the average single family home um, at 141, you know, add 2% to that every year. And I think we're moving further away from equity and recovering the costs that we need to, uh, to operate this system. And, and hopefully we run the risk of it increasing by 25 every year. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Kirk. I have, se I, I have several questions, and I, I'll try to go through them. Like, can you hear me? Okay. I have several questions, <laughs> and I'll try to go through them real fast. Uh, one is... Uh, when you were presenting your proposed budget for this uh, utility, it was almost entirely operating costs. But then you're going to have to replace cash, catch basins at the very least, which is a capital cost. <coughs> so uh, also we heard somebody suggest that if you're going to get phosphorus and oil out of the water, you're going to need a treatment plant. You know, this, despite the shaking of the heads, you're not. That, that, I'm going to deal with that in a second. But, <laughs> but the capital costs have you? You presumably have spoken to other towns and have some idea of the capital costs involved, which are your turn. The <laughs> oh, every town is dealing. This is a new permit, and every town is looking at this differently. Mm -hmm. uh, Newton has been at this for a while. We just heard that from the right. engineer. Right, Newton, but Newton's initial stormwater utility fee was was be, began for a particular purpose. Mm -hmm. They wanted to improve a park, their drainage qual water quality at a park. Mm -hmm. So their initial uh, fee in 2006 was to generate enough funds to do drainage improvements at the park, which included uh, replacing all their drainage system, all their catch basins, all the route falls, doing water quality treatments for the park. Mm -hmm. That was in 2006. The new permits come online. Now they're looking at, do, obviously, they got to look at the entire town. Chicopees, which went in effect in 98, was again for a specific purpose. Their initial permit, uh, stormwater utility, was to, because they were under an, an administrative consent order with the DEP and EPA to remove their combined sewers. Mm -hmm. That's what their stormwater utility was first generated. Northampton's initial stormwater utility, theirs went into effect because of extreme flooding of the Connecticut River along the banks of the, the city of Northampton. So each town is different. Each town has to look at it differently. We have in here uh, some capital improvements, and some, and, but majority is operating and, and administrative because there is some, quite a bit of administrative items that are, we're obligated to do, i.e. wet weather, dry weather monitoring, uh, but we do have some catch basin cleaning. Year six is when we go into the much larger, which we won't know that until year four. Okay. We so don't know what that will be. Okay. So that's, I figure the, the $1.96 million budget is just the start. The, the, the unfortunately, I, I, we won't know that until year four. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second question I have is uh, who, uh, who is going to be monitoring this and managing this and who is going to make sure that uh, you guys aren't cheating and, uh, <laughs> you know. Thanks, Mr. Kerr. Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, really, you know, there's, there's, there's got to be somebody who's going to watch out. Um, you know, the sure. incentive here to cheat is enormous. So, so Chris, when you're, you're, when you're talking about cheating, I mean, I, mean I, I would assume that, that you're, you're, you're asking very similar to, to what Mr. Lukash asked, which is the transparency element here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, that's, I'm, I'm assuming that everybody here is perfectly honest. <laughs> okay. But the problem is that somebody has to check you, somebody. Mm -hmm. It either is the state or the federal government, and I'm asking who is going to check you guys? As far as compliance to the regulations? Yeah. Well, I, you know. Who's going to check to make sure that the water is flowing at the outlet at the rate you say? Who's going to say the phosphorus levels are what you say? Somebody had, I, again, I'm not accusing anybody <coughs> here of being a crook or misleading or well, anything Well, I think like we're that. very Somebody's fortunate because on our left, we have 
the environmentalist and okay. on our right we've got the federal and state government okay. and unfortunately in this situation we're stuck in the middle. Um, I'm, that's that's not that's not relevant. What's, yeah, who's going to check this? Okay. So we're right. obligated under the permit to submit annual reports to, to the EPA, okay, uh, which are then made public and they, those are scrutinized. Okay, so the feds are going to check up on you. More than likely, it won't be well so with their times? limited uh, staff. <laughs> typically, it's uh, third-party interveners. Okay, so basically environmentalists are going to... That's correct. Screw you. Which, okay. which typical, right. And I'll bring up our water withdrawal permit. Yeah. Our water withdrawal permit, uh, which was issued in 2013 or yeah. early 14, was appealed. Yeah. And that went through uh, 18 months litigation yeah. okay. before it was finally... Okay, who here in this building is going to be responsible for all this stormwater drainage, uh, stormwater management? The uh, uh, DPW and then under that, the engineering department. Okay. So you and? The engineering department. His staff. So, yeah. so currently, I am still the town engineer. So you're so going to be, be doing both. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. Uh, uh, another question is, um, who is, uh, all right, a point that was raised earlier, which is, a lot of houses in town, including mine, the downspouts do not drain into the street. They go into what are called French drains. So I don't got no runoff from my roof, so I don't get charged from my roof? Yes, no? So, so anybody under 5,000 square feet yeah. of impervious surface yeah. will get charged at $90. Right. Okay, you get that regardless That's of what correct. It, the minimum. That's it. That's correct. Okay. Uh, another thing is who gets charged, this is a point that was t touched on earlier, which is who gets charged for the public impervious service? Like your, as in this building, impervious service and highways and roads and all that. Who pays for all that? So the roads are not part of it in terms of the fee, but each of the town's parcels are? And we have roughly 200 and some odd parcels. 400 parcels. 400 <laughs> parcels. And that will be paid currently out of uh, general, the general fund. Okay, so that, so you are going to take money out of general revenues to put into this enterprise fund. Correct. Just like we do for water and sewer fees. Okay. And, uh, all right. and one last one. Oh. Uh, the other one is, uh, the last one is uh, f cleaning up the phosphorus in the water. And uh, I, 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 I sort of suspect that a lot of that is coming from septic systems. Uh, no. No? No. There are some probably coming from septic systems, but the town, for the most part, is on sewer. So there's very few septic systems in town left. Mm -hmm. uh, majority of the the pollutants are, well, the phosphorus comes from fertilizers, comes from geese, comes from the leaves and the trees, uh, and it comes that's already in the ground that's been there for decades, that now bleeds out of the ground. So, so, so unfortunately, this permit, and I, I didn't really want to bring this up. <laughs> yes, so that's the, why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> so this permit is a result of past generations mm -hmm. who did things at that particular time yeah was normal and standard and acceptable. Okay. That's Unfortunately, as time goes on, so the 1972 Clean Waters Act, put one of the issues was the Nashua River in Fitchburg when it caught on fire. Okay. That's where the 1972 Clean Waters Act came from, in Cleveland and several other locations. Uh, the Burning so Cuyahoga River. The, oh, since then, waters have been cleaned up and cleaned up. However, there is still phosphorus in... It, for instance, Jordan Pond. Jordan <laughs> Pond, if we had distilled water going into Jordan Pond, phosphorus-laden discharge would still be coming out of Jordan Pond because of the phosphorus that's embedded in the sediment. Yeah. No, the, 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 the problem is, though, that if it were coming out of septic systems, you could deal with that. You could just, mm -hmm. somehow you could say, you're going to have to put it, hook up to the sewer or have a better septic system. But if it's coming from no particular source at all, you have no control over it, which brings 
the problem of either you somehow pay some kind of fine to the EPA for polluting the water, or else you build a treatment plant. So for instance, Jordan Pond, yeah. we have to reduce the discharge to Jordan Pond by six, the phosphorus load by 60%. Yeah. I believe there's only three discharge points into Jordan Pond yeah. that come directly off of uh, the end of Plainfield, uh, a couple of those other side streets. Yeah. That is it. So for us to clean those up, we'll have to do, probably have to do something at those discharge points before it enters Jordan Pond. What that is at this point, we don't know. Okay. So you Which is part of what the first five years we'll right. do, we'll is start evaluating yeah. each yeah. of those. And there's a very complicated uh, non-engineering equation that Vincent's having a very difficult time uh, trying to re replicate. Yeah. A, a, a equation of how to calculate the reduction of phosphorus. Okay. Uh, I know the state and uh, Representative Le or uh, Commissioner LeBeau is here from the Department of Agriculture. They have looked at uh, eliminating phosphorus in uh, fertilizers. Yep. However, there is still you can still get it. You can get it out of state, and so there. But the state Massachusetts has done a re elimination of phosphorus and fertilizers. That's one of the things we can get credit for. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the 1.9 million bucks is just the start of it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Mr. Budenhagen. Gene Budenhagen, 201 Gulf Street. Uh, I just want to make a, a few comments. We've been talking about the Water Management Act for about the last 10 years, and until this last public hearing, I think the formula to assess the homeowner has become very complicated compared to what we've been talking about for the last 10 years on what the rate structure would be, how we would structure the fee, and how we would assess each individual resident and commercial and industrial property in the town. I think some of these fees are going to just shock our commercial and industrial base. I really do. But going beyond that, at the last public hearing, there was a discussion, and a gentleman earlier had mentioned it uh, on cost. The annual cost was going to be a million four. Now, tonight you said it's a million seven, and there's been no discussion on what was going to be credited for what the normal operations we presently do today with the DPU in the highway department. So I think. We need a little more explanation on those figures, if you could bring that forward. The next thing being is we've got an awful lot of nonprofit organizations in this town, and I'm just wondering how this is going to go over with some of these nonprofits and how we're actually going to be able to collect from them these additional fees. And also, the biggest burden is going to be the town itself because the town is probably going to be the biggest bill. And I don't know exactly how we're going to handle that internally, switching the dollars from one account to the next. I think we need some explanation on that. It would be very helpful. I'll let you answer that one. Sure. Uh, thank you for the questions. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the 1.4 to the 1.8 um, changes. Um, so, as we talked about setting the rate over the five-year period, uh, the annual rates range from one million four hundred and sixty thousand five hundred to one million eight hundred and thirty thousand one hundred three in the peak year, and the rate has been set in order to garner uh, uh, enough funds in any given year to cover those uh, fees, and also begin to build a capital reserve um, that. Uh, will be retained by this utility enterprise fund to uh, offset uh, future costs in any one of those five years or in year six as we have to uh, ramp up our capital investments. So um, being on the finance committee, I know you know, but just so everyone knows that whenever we, when we raise a fee for a particular purpose, it's dedicated as a receipt only for, to be expended uh, for costs related to those purposes. So um, in the years where we 
um, have lesser annual estimates in, in actual costs, um, those excess revenues that are earned will again be placed into reserve funds for the purpose only uh, for this utility. So uh, that uh, hopefully explains the range of costs um, that, that you've heard over the course of the various meetings. Um, one of the other things that we need to uh, account for, just like we do in the general fund through our overlay reserve, is for those credits and abatement, or credits, excuse me, that any individual property may raise. So when we budget at the beginning of the year, uh, it, within any of our funds, we assume 100% collection. But we can't have 100% collection, 100% expenditure, and, one, and a granting of credits all within the same amount of money. So we actually have to uh, build in an expense line item to cover our anticipated credits. So uh, while we will raise funds in excess of the actual bottom line in every year in that five-year outlook, we, we do need to account for you know, anywhere between three to 10% in credits until we can kind of normalize that cost and understand what it's gonna be on a year-by-year -year basis. Um, and then, you know, as we move to out years and we have larger commercial developments, we see those developers uh, certainly accounting for the stormwater utility uh, during their development phase, which may uh, lead to a cost-benefit analysis. Will they, you know, uh, build their systems above and beyond in order to get the credits, et cetera. So, um, and then uh, regarding the, um, the funds that are currently within the, the general fund budget <coughs> associated Bless with you. Um, the highway department and or engineering department that will be allocated to this enterprise fund, in fiscal year 2019, the current year, we believe $255,746 is uh, associated with stormwater activities within the budget. Um, $96,000 are proposed to remain within the general fund, which, um, as Mr. Highland detailed earlier, would account for the cost of the string, uh, spring street sweeping, and the balance of those funds uh, would be allocated to, to the, um, the stormwater rate through either direct charges or indirect charges within the enterprise accounting system. I, I'd just like to add, I just think one footnote to you know, just indicate that the additional funds, if there's things left over, would go into reserve. Would be very, very helpful, really, to the to the public to, mm -hmm. to know uh, about those things. So and, ju and just one thing, um, that I didn't neglect or I failed to answer your final question, which is, what's the town's bill? And it's $121,000. Uh, we do, we do feel that we're probably the the largest uh, single entity that will um, be subject to this fee. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm John Amoroso from 18 Blossom Tree Drive. I listened to all these stories of the areas you're talking about. I think I'm from the land of misfit toys. We own our own roads. We maintain our roads, we sweep our roads, all our drains go into wells. So where do we fit into this is our concern. We, 114 of us, pay our individual tax bills. We pay our own water bill, we pay our own sewer bills. And we own all those systems. If you want us to pay all this, then we'll give you the roads. Happily. <laughs> you can pave them. You can sweep them, because that's what we do. So we got to, uh, with the misfit toys, I say, because none of this fits what we do for the most part. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that works with your plan. Again, the idea would be to try to, so the, the entire town, every resident benefits from the, the, the public streets, benefits from the, the drainage system that's in place. It benefits from the other amenities, i.e. Lake Quinsigamon, Dean Pond, Jordan Pond, et cetera. And so in order to meet the requirements of the permit, every citizen should be, uh, is part of, the, the, hopefully part of the solution. How are you gonna divide it up? That's my question. If I, if I take care of my roads, which you can have, if I clean the catch basins, if I sweep the streets, all that stuff, we pay for it. We main the residents of that place. So my question is, if you wanna take it over, you're welcome to, but we're gonna, we're gonna pay, turn it over to you to do. If we want us to, if you want us to have the same equitable situation that everybody else has, 
by dumping a lot of this stuff on us, and we don't do anything. We don't contribute to schools either, by the way. Because as you can see by me, we don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you gotta be, there's some, you got to be, some effort's got to be made to figure out how to get around this thing. Right. So, so we, we tried to be equitable. I mean, no matter which method that we picked or chose or looked at it or wasn't equitable to somebody, and but we tried to be as equitable to everybody as best we could. But everybody else that you're talking about, in this spread of uh, properties, they don't pave the roads, they don't sweep the roads, they don't run the sewer system, and we do. That's my problem. Hmm. It's because it doesn't fit, as I said, with the misfit toys. But seriously, I think you've got to really go back and think, what can, or what can we give to you to take, make a difference? Like we want to pay, sweep our roads, fine. You can run your sweeper up there all you want. No problem. We'll take that under advisement and take a look so at that, it. Some, that's, you got to kind of think that out. What's the name of your road? Well, it's, we, it's your village of Orchard Meadow. We sure. have roughly one mile of roads that are, we maintain. We have, what, about 20 or 30 catch basins, uh, all of which go into great big, two great big ponds. Hmm. All of which we maintain, as I say, we, we maintain them. I say, we're, we're, you're welcome to take them over. <laughs> Got it. I've heard that a couple times. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Yeah. Peter, there's, there's other systems like the, like Orchard Meadows also. They're not alone in that. There's okay. other condos that maintain their, their own systems internally. So there, there's, there's some other examples similar to this gentleman. Okay. Have you got, have, have you got a problem, a way to solve that problem? I, I wish. I don't at the moment. Yeah. We'll start thinking, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Sir? I'm Charles Garabedi in 24 Westmont Road. In reading a, an excerpt from the uh, town website, as town stormwater run, uh, runoff flows, it picks up pollutants such as fertilizer, first one. My question is, has the federal government identified what type of fertilizers are causing this problem? Secondly, if they haven't, they should. By identifying those fertilizers, those fertilizers should not be manufactured. Number two, if they are manufactured, they should not be sold in the town of Shrewsbury for anybody to, to, to use it. So if we're going to solve this problem, you have to go to the source of the problem. If these are some of the sources, I don't know. I'm not an expert, but my logic tells me you go to the source. So we've got to push back, and I hope this board along with other boards, along with our state government, through our senators and representatives, pushes back to the federal government and say, you are mandating something without money, solve it. But what are they doing to solve it? I would advise you, I, I would challenge you to write a letter to the EPA and say, we're not going to do this unless it's funded. Uh, I know that's not a good idea. I know that's not a good idea. It's it's not don't, a it don't work idea, that way. So we are actually part of the appeal. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, in which the town uh, provided funds for the appeal, right. in all, directly, but also indirectly, as a member of the Stormwater Coalition, which we are a member of. Uh, and that appeal's been going on since... May of 2016, um, and it's our understanding it's in mediation, and it's we'll, they lumped it together with the New Hampshire repeal. Uh, the two of, we are the last two permits. Uh, some of the states have had this permit since the late 90s. We are the last two states to get this stringent of a permit. The next ingredient <coughs> that I would question is salt. There are all there are various types of salt. Some salts are, quote, good, some are bad. Again, the same question I asked you, you, I asked the federal government, which ones can we use, and if they're bad, they shouldn't be manufactured. And I don't know where the salts are being used, but one obvious use to me is when we, in the wintertime, when we have a storm, we salt our, our roads. And I suppose we would have to go to the highway department. Are there certain types of salts or different salts that we could use that are better than other salts? 
in terms of the environment. And so obviously, you have to balance the expense of that as well. Well, we, yeah. So we are. That's one of the things we're looking into because we have to not only balance cost, but we have to do public safety. Yeah, I understand. Uh, there are sections of New Hampshire that have banned salt completely. However, they have <laughs> icing issues. Obviously, uh, there are other methods, but and we are looking at each one of those options as part of our winter ma uh, maintenance program. Uh, I don't know, we're looking at brine, we're looking at other options, but that's just, we're looking at options. And then the other item I notice here is trash. And everywhere I go I see trash, especially in my neighborhood on Monday, because that is trash pickup day. And some people are absolutely insensitive to putting out a trash bin where the trash is secure. I, for one, will go around my neighborhood and perhaps foolishly, and some people have laughed at me for doing it, I pick up other people's trash so it doesn't get involved. And I put it, and some of it, I put it in the right place, whether it's in whatever <laughs> bin. Sometimes it has to be go, go, into, an, go, go, go into something that's going to be thrown away without being recycled. And I think that's something that the town should maybe call uh, more attention to and the people that don't do this somehow just be policed. And I, I can, in my neighborhood, I can pick up three homes that I know that are continually doing this. And I think something that, that we have to be aware of because, because every single little bit is, ca is causing a problem. And now here we are looking for more money for residents to pick up something that could be solved with zero dollars. Just be careful how you put out your trash. And I was going to say it again, I hope that you can push back hard against the federal government also the state government, because in everything that is happening in our society today, they are coming down with unfunded mandates. How much can people absorb unfunded mandates? And I, I think there's something in the Constitution that says they can't do that. But I don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> and I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gentleman in the back. Yes, sir. I have many questions, but I'll try to keep it brief with name, these three. Name Paul, and location. Paul Sheffer, 62 Westwood. Um, with what's been in the news, there's been a lot of rollbacks on ET, EPA regulations. Has anybody looked at how this thing that was done, that was started in 2004, or whenever it was started, is in sync or has kept up with the rollbacks that the government has put through? Is anybody looking at that? Um, change, right? Secondly, is the does does this body have already determined what tier each household would be at? Is there a place you can go on the website to say, okay, I'm tier one or I'm tier five or whatever, based on a property address? Uh, and you know, I don't know enough about it, but what I heard tonight was we seem to be the town that's impacted the most. Ninety something percent of our town is affected by this. Worcester has their own deal for whatever reason. Um, has anybody talked to our legislators to say, you know, putting this much burden on one town where it's so grand to scale and other towns have almost no impact? Is there something that could be done there to help offset that? Those are my questions. I'll try to answer them so that the if you contact the engineering department, call, uh, contact Vincent. He has every parcel and can tell you which tier you're in each parcel. Okay. Um, Vincent? Vincent Ty. Okay. So V-T-H-A-I at shoesburyma.gov. Okay. Uh, or stormwater at shoesburyma.gov. Okay. And it goes to Vincent. Okay. Um, the the what was the first question? The first one was with the oh, rollbacks. Oh, roll the EPA so th th this is a program that's actually started, probably started around in the 70s uh, in each state. Massachusetts is one of only four states that is actually does not have, uh, does the, sta the state DEP does not have jurisdiction over this permit. Uh, Massachusetts is one of only four states that does not. New Hampshire, 
New Mexico, I think Idaho, and Massachusetts. Uh, all other states, uh, the state <coughs> controls the permit with guidelines from DEP, I mean, with, from the EPA. The EPA, this permit will go live regardless of any rollback. As I said, we are one of the last states to actually have this permit be activated. Um, New Hampshire and Massachusetts, I believe, are the last two. Uh, uh, I came, f I worked in Delaware for a long time. We actually were doing this permit in 96 in Delaware, that they were under the same permit. As strict, or not quite as strict, because each permit that gets even stricter. Mm -hmm. But we were doing the monitoring of the detention basins. We were evaluating them on a yearly basis. We were, we were providing additional uh, reporting to the state at that time. Um, Jeff, can I, can I ask one yep. thing there too? I, I believe, if I'm correct, most other parts of the country go under a countywide system, rather than Massachusetts, a little bit different. You have wide counties, it's a countywide, rather than just individual towns like in New England. If you go to the Midwest, out in, out in the West and the South, there's large counties, it's a countywide assessment. Here you have individual towns like Boston, Shrewsbury, they get these individuals. So I think that's another that differential across the continental the United States. Um, and, and we are the largest in terms of percentage in Central Mass. Uh, Eastern Mass, most of those towns are 100% in our, our MS4 communities. Uh, Worcester has a separate permit because they're a larger city, and they, they're, they are, we're under a t what they call a Tier 2 uh, MS4. Worcester and Boston are Tier 1. So they have different requirements in our, than, than what we have. Are they more lenient? No. <laughs> no. They have different options, but Worcester estimated their cost for five-year cost would be $1.2 billion to meet the permit requirement. And it's your belief that even if the EPA regulations were rolled back, we still have to comply? That's a, that is correct. We, even if the, the, our appeal is successful, majority of the permit will still be in effect. The appeal, our, our appeal was based, um, I won't get too much into That's the fine. details, That's fine. but it's really dealing with uh, the per percentage of reduction because the Clean Water Act didn't have any provisions in there for an actual reduction requirement. It just said it must be reduced. So. Okay, and the last one was uh, talking to our legislators. I mean, we're the legisl we've been in touch with the legislators. Um, I mean, 90%, that's huge. And if everybody benefits from a cleaner water table, why is, you know, are we going to get naming rights or something that we're paying for all of it? You know, what is it? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so anyway. They, our legislators are well aware. If I have more questions, who could I reach out to? Uh, again, you can send any email to that stormwater at uh, shrewsburyma.gov. Okay. Thanks. Uh, and that goes to Vincent, and then he, he, he'll run it by whoever he thinks should answer the question. He's all Thanks. over it. Thank you. Yep. Yes, sir. Ma'am, I'm sorry. <laughs> Carol Keating, I'm at 44 Robertson Drive. Um, regarding the monthly billing, is it going to be on actual usage or estimates? So for excuse the me, water. For, for the, water, come July when you're going to do the monthly billings. It'll be actual uh, actual usage. Actual, actual usage, okay. Um, and then the other thing is the st st um, street sweeping for the fall. I would think that's a little different than the spring because of all the sand that's on the streets. <laughs> and maybe it can be done quicker than eight weeks, you know? Um, you actually have opposite problems. So the springtime you have the salt, the sand right. from, from the street. Right. From uh, the plowing operation. Right. This fall you have the leaves. Yeah. So and it's the actually, leaves are going to be high. It's actually more difficult in the fall than it is in the spring. Right, which I agree. But I also agree it should be quicker or a different method because it's not the same beast, you know, you're dealing with. What we're finding is actually it may take longer, from at least from each of the contractors we t contact. And you don't have that time. We don't. That is absolutely right. correct. Right. You don't have the time. I mean, it's kind of like plowing. We don't take eight weeks to plow the town, you that's know, correct. right? That's correct. That's <laughs> correct. So the, the problem is because there's so much leaves, you have to empty it more often. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Worcester has the vacuum system, you know, that they use. I don't correct. know if you've seen that okay 
That's all. Uh, and, and, I, and I would That's like to say that we, Shrewsbury does have an advantage over most of the communities that are obligated to do both street sweeping and catch basin cleanings, is that we can dispose ours at the landfill at no cost. Every other town has to pay a fee, which that fee, oh, the, yeah, the catch basin cleans. The Route 20 is, landfill. Yes. Okay. The catch basin cleans is considered a, a hazardous material. Yeah as is some of the street sweeping. So we're fortunate that we don't have that expense mm. that most communities do have. Yeah. Okay. Can we take $1.7 million and take other towns' leaves? No, we don't want to fill it up too fast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter Blanchard, 15, Heatherwood Drive. Uh, just a couple of questions. If Worcester's not under uh, on water like we are, we can we can be working as hard as we can to solve this problem, and all of this, well, I don't want to say what it comes down into the lake, uh, we accomplish nothing. Everything we do is negated because Worcester is doing nothing. So the quality of the water is not necessarily going to improve. I'm not going to speak for Worcester, but they are under a phase two permit, so they're obligated to do thing, uh, cleaning up of the waterways also. They are, they're under a different permit. They fall but under a different under, permit. They're, under they're not permit. under the phase two. They're under a phase one permit. Okay. Has there been a baseline established for the condition of the waterways now at this point when we start this? So the baseline was established by EPA and DEP under uh, reports that they had previously done, and that's what the baseline is based on. So will we get a report in five years to see how far we've come with this? We and won't. What? Yeah, we probably won't in five years. But we will probably in a uh, time frame after that, because the first five years is the evaluation period. And then from that point, then we start actually doing projects to there where we start to actually do some of the cleaning of the water of the discharge point. So that's when the real money is going to be. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there a process for appealing denied credits? Yes. So the, the initial f is to submit your requested credits to the engineering department. If you don't believe those credits are accurate, then there'd be a hearing in front of the sewer commissioners. Okay. And on the bills, the new bills, the monthly bills, will the, this assessment be a separate item on there or just blend it in with the... It'd be separate. It'll be a separate, separate item yes. so we can keep track of correct. what correct. that is. Okay. So there will be a final report coming out sometime. There'll be, a file, there'll be evaluations as we go forward because there'll be certain criteria we have to submit as part of our annual report. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. Bob Mitchell, 33 Latour Street. <coughs> um, I guess I'll, I'll first start off by uh, saying I'm a little disappointed coming in that I didn't see any of the uh, EPA uh, final rule fact sheets to go along with this meeting. You, know, you went through and quoted <clears throat> a number of the um, uh, requirements that they stipulate in, the, in their documents, and <clears throat> specifically those six items that you mentioned, which basically invokes the, uh, the help or the response of residents in implementing a, uh, uh, this type of program. Under MPDS permits, which I have some familiarity with, having worked at a couple of facilities and uh, remediated a couple back to clean uh, status, um, usually they have uh, requirements set to monitor, in other words, limits. And based on that, you set goals and best management practices associated with that. I haven't seen any of that presented as part of this or what we're doing, what the goals are. Um, and then when you go down through the six items and then later on when you read some of their reports, they talk specifically about the involvement of residents in helping monitoring this program and implementing it. But as you read the, the information, it, it leads you to believe, although don't, they don't come out and say it specifically, is that it's not designed to punish the homeowner for having property and monitoring the water that's coming off. Management of the stormwater systems associated with streets is part of our general maintenance that we pay in our, in our tax base. Larger companies, larger developments that have uh, larger surface areas as part of the, um, the uh, other programs that, that they have, the illicit discharge detection program, which I'm not sure what we're doing with these larger facilities. We just did the, uh, 
the big construction down there at um, where the old Spags uh, facility was. Um, you've got all the car construction lots that went along Route 9. Um, <clears throat> up on um, Route 20, you've got tractor trailer parks up there. All of these things contribute to the problem that we have, not the homeowner's house, because you know, those of us that decide, are we monitoring for those? Uh, we have a fine structure in place to punish those who are actually doing this to our water? I don't think there's anybody in this place that would say they don't want cleaner water. You know, I, I think we're all for that. And how we get there is certainly you know, subject to what, what you guys are trying to do, and I, I'm, you know, I say I do appreciate that. But you know, you've got construction activities that go on. I have not heard, nor did I see in the, in the monetary assessment that was done, it, is there a permit process by which if I'm constructing something of some size, I've got to file a permit, and there's a fee associated with that, probably in the building department somewhere. I, is that money revenue come into this program to help support that? Um, and then long term, uh, they talk about the, um, you know, what, what you can do to monitor and, and for those places that build large facilities, you know, as part of the post-construction runoff control measures that EPA talks about. You know, what have we done? Again, we go down to where the old Spags building was. I, I don't see anything in there other but storm drains that go out somewhere into the system. I don't see any other measures in place when, down there. So yet, you know, supposedly these best management practices and these requirements are supposed to be in place. You know, permits to, to do that um, usually cost money. You know, this program should be self-funded, not funded by the residents off of their properties who really don't contribute uh, to the problem. Um, and I'm going to go back and just, you know, something that I had uh, marked in one of these documents um, that they talk about. Um, specifically, it's part of the illicit uh, um, detection process, but you know, what's not addressed in those discharges, you know, they, they have a whole litany of, you know, line flushing, landscape irrigation, diverted steam flow, stream flows, rising groundwaters, uncontaminated groundwater infiltration, pump groundwater, discharges from portable water source, foundation drains, air conditionings, all that is not part of this program, yet that's what you'll find on most residents, residential property. Yet we're being charged, or going to be charged to, for, for those types of things. You know, the, 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 the industries, the companies, the businesses, you know, and I heard some of the concerns about what does it cost them, you know, to do this. You know, well, sometimes if the cost is high enough, they, they put countermeasures in place to, to offset those costs. So to prevent those discharges from going, especially if you end up with a fine. Trust me, I know what it's like to be fined by, by EPA. You know, it's not, it's not a fun time. So, um, um, I got a few other questions that I wrote down that, that I'd like to throw out here. Um, I think you answered most of them. Uh, I saw in the Tier 1 through Tier 3 that about uh, $900,000 of the uh, collected money comes from those properties, which is basically residential properties, it looks like. Um, the, the balance, one, one million, maybe a little bit less comes. Is the rate structure uh, a flat rate based on square footage, or is it prorated based on if you have more property, your percentage goes down, your percentage cost? It just seems like there's a, there's a, there's a delta there that I, you know, and not having run the numbers, I'm not sure if that's, if that's what I'm seeing. So, um, so probably, sir. Um, yeah. I talked a little bit about the annual goals and best management practices. Uh, the first communication I've seen that went out as part of that whole process where, where you supposedly enlisted the help of the community with this process was a notification that, hey, your bill's going up. So you got everybody's attention, as you can see, the number of people that are here. Um, again, I talked about the fees and the permits. I guess I didn't see anything in the budget line item that said, you know, here's, here's the money that's coming from the uh, town uh, building department. You know, are those fees high enough uh, in there? Is that coming back into this fund to offset some of that? Um, you, you had mentioned uh, some of the sins of the past that, you know, with the grounds and, and the, the leaves or the phosphorus that, that's in the ground. I, I will say that uh, I think the town itself has, has done a poor, poor job in managing that. They shut off the, uh, the yard there for, for residents to dump their stuff so we don't contribute to the stuff. It actually forces people now to start dumping, you know, their leaves, their brush and stuff like that into the woods, you know, or into areas that aren't being used or, or maintaining it on their property and then creating that problem especially if you've got a runoff situation going on. One gentleman mentioned, and, and I, I feel his pain. I see the same thing in my neighborhood with the trash blowing around. 
You know, we're on an old antiquated system with, with bags and little buckets out there. You go to even, even the smaller communities around us, they have the, the one bucket with mixed trash or two buckets with mixed trash that picks it up. You know, so again, those are, to me, those are some of the best management practices that can be implemented in the town that, that can help the process. The last thing I'll mention is, you know, specifically, you know, we, we talk about what gets into the storm drains, and you heard a couple of people talk about water and oil mixtures and, and how they don't dilute. Yet, you know, down where I live, down on Latoura Street, there's Howe Ave that connects up uh, between there. Over the past five years, that, that road has been done with gravel and oil or tar put down in that road and the gravel put on, covered over the storm drains. The storm drains openings now, if they do exist, they're probably about that big compared to it. And, and I watched them do it and there's no controls put in place over the storm drains, you know, yet here we are today talking about how we're going to mitigate those types of things, yet we have done nothing. Um, salt into the, uh, I challenge you, after this last storm, just take a walk down on Oak Street and look at all the side streets. At the beginning of every side street, there's a pile of salt. <coughs> where the, where it's, you know, they come in and sand, and they do a great job sanding and salting, but, well, we've got to do something different if we're going to leave piles of salt there and then just have them wash into the storm sewer system, and then we as residents got to help clean up because we're, we're just not doing the right thing. So, again, I, I appreciate, I guess, the, the one thing I, you know, the one question I walk away with is, you know, the money um, is, you know, the, the revenue from other town departments was talked about for the DPW, but you know, from the aspect of permitting and fines associated with violating permits and the inspections done by that, um, I, I didn't see that as part of a line item going over into the budget. So, Jeff, you want to comment? Hey, can on I one? address a couple of your comments? Sure, go right ahead. Or please. questions or concerns? Uh, I'll start with Lakeway Commons, the old Spags property. Yep. So, what you don't see is the large underground infiltration system. That's below that parking lot. Okay. So most properties built after, or well, probably in the 90s, 2000s <coughs> on, meet the current stormwater management guidelines. Okay. And, and who monitors that output to make sure it's working right? Is that a town function or those? So the town uh, witnessed the installation of it. Yep. And and observed while it was in, and then the as built, et cetera, once that was installed. Okay. Uh, but, and again, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know, to close out that conversation, my, my experience has been people put things in and then they just walk away. And, uh, unfortunately, and you are absolutely correct, which is historically what m almost every single town in Massachusetts has done mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. So what you sort of didn't hear, we, the, the, we have prepared a stormwater management gu regulations, mm -hmm. which does in there require from this point forward, once the, the sewer commissioners adopt this, a much more stringent construction uh, inspections, et cetera, and also requires in perpetuity new facilities to, to on a yearly basis to send us th their monitoring of all their stormwater, mainly the commercial properties. Okay, right. but that um, has been in place, that's not in place now. It, it's not, it's written, it was, a public hearing was heard on this, and now it's... But, but if I listen to your, your uh, chronology of where this regulation originally started back in that is late, late 2000s That's 2006, frame, that's correct. You know, it, it sounds like we've been dragging our feet for quite a while and, e and, and e doing the things that are... Right, doesn't, you know, doing the right thing doesn't have to be mandated by the EPA or the federal right. government, you know. It, that is correct. It's part of our responsibilities as, you know, good citizens, but, you know, we... You know, so... Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So. Uh, the salt, well, I'll look into the salt piles. Yeah. Uh, but we, the town, the town implemented um, um, new spreaders on each of the sanders. We've actually reduced our salt almost in half mm -hmm. from what we were three years ago, four years ago. We actually have, they actually are calibrated. <clears throat> and we monitor each one of the, the trucks um, of how much they're actually putting down. So we've actually reduced how much salt significantly <coughs> in the last um, three or four years. Yep. And we've also eliminated most of the sand. Okay. Actually, we don't use sand on the, on the paved surfaces at all, in, or rarely do. Yep. But now, how, how do you translate that into what uh, you do in the large parking lots like where Staples is, Home Depot, Th you know, that, Lakewoods, you know. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't control what goes on on private property. Well, it sounds like that's what this regulation is trying to do. <laughs> it, it does, which sort of, in, in some ways, it does tie our hands a little bit on those on those larger parking lots. Yep. 
we can put into place if they come now for a new uh, uh, site plan. We can require them. There's some towns who say you can't use salt in your parking lots around town that do that. We that potentially could be done at the planning board level. Yeah. And, and to me, that you know, uh, again, trying to get the quality of water down, you know, is, is an effort by by everybody, not just you know the residents to pay you know a fee to get the water down while you know private businesses are in there not, not regulated in, in what they do and they're impacting us and what it costs us you know so you know it just it, it seems for lack of better words unfair you know, so, you know. and you recognize that the businesses are being charged a fee as well this is not just a residential this is every property but, in, but in the, town. And, and I agree and, and I saw you know if you have a lot of property you pay you pay a lot of money you right. know I, I can understand that but you know we're asked to be paid for something that we as residents have no control over but we look to you as a governing body for us to have some control over over these things so that it doesn't impact all of us you know that to me that's what what I, what I would be looking for in, in this whole thing so you know it's you know paying the you know if it costs me two hundred dollars a month three uh, two hundred dollars a year three hundred dollars a year even on a fixed income you know all well and fine you know it's, it's going to good cause but I just get frustrated that I'm paying and I'm working trying to clean up, yet I, I can just go down the street and I can see, you know, the car lots up along Route 9 with the uh, vendors in there with their power washers, you know, power washing everything down. Where does it go? Into the local storm source. You know, so, you know, it's just that, the salt, you know, th those types of activities. Well, I think we're looking to you guys, you know, as a commission for help, you know, in putting the appropriate regulations in place to help us solve this problem. Yeah. I think if we solve this problem, then you're going to look at that revenue stream, although... I have yet in my lifetime see fees go down. You know, hopefully they won't go up as fast. Yep. Or they get offset by fines because people are not in compliance with, with permit requirements. And that takes some enforcement. So. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Ben Tartaglia, 19 Kenilworth Road, um, town meeting member from Precinct 6. Wow, I'm sorry. Here we go. Is that better? Yes. How's that? Perfect. <laughs> Testing. One, two, three. <clears throat> I'll use my outside voice. All right. Anyway, thank you for having this. Um, you've answered a lot of my questions. Um, what? I'm just curious, what is the proposed budget this year, uh, Mr. Mizakar? Total town budget. Uh, for fiscal year 19, total expenditure is $143 million. $143 million. Okay. I thought it was around 120 Boy, that adds up fast. Anyway, um, it looks like if we started to uh, try to save money in the town budget, we could do it with about a one to one and a half percent, uh, <clears throat> not cut, but managing a decrease in the town's budget. We wouldn't need this one, whatever it is, a couple million dollars. It would all come from just improving operations. My skill set uh, for decades was in operating capital costs, work measurement, how to make place businesses in trouble be able to survive in some cases, in other cases actually prosper by looking at how they do their operations. Uh, so I think we can just do it by uh, restricting our, our expenses in town. Uh, and what was the total FTEs in town now, Mr. Mizakar? I don't, I don't know the number off the top of my head. It's around, if you include schools, 2,000. About 2,000? 2,000 employees. Is that the FTEs or is that bodies? No, it's pretty close either way. Okay, about, about 2,000 FTEs. Including schools. Yeah, including schools. And that's where most of the money resides in most organizations is in the people, not only for salaries, but benefits, out costs of retirement. I mean, that's where the bucks are. So if you're trying to save a million dollars or a million eight, you look at the people first, and then you look at some other things you can do. Just a couple of thoughts here, uh, and I'm not picking. I'm not picking on a particular 
department here. But right now we have three people in the town uh, personnel that deal with human resources. And they're all within 100 feet of each other. There's one in the schools, there's one in the uh, um, selectman's office, and there's one in the assessor's office, I think. I think that's what I just saw. There's three people. When you have people separated by walls, their efficiency goes way down. You get them together, you could probably get rid of one of those, those positions. I'm not saying you could do it. I know, because I've seen people when they, they add one person to a two-person department, they don't get a 50% increase in their output. They get a 100% increase, simply because they share things, they share the support. I mean, that's where the bucks are. Somebody's got to start looking at that. I cannot believe we have three human resource people sitting within 100 feet of each other. That makes no operating sense at all. I know they're going to have specialties, but I've worked, I've, you know, I've been an so, employment manager, I've done all this stuff. So just to summarize your point here, what you're saying is, is one way to do this instead of going forward with this proposed is to somehow just eliminate become it. more operationally That's the first efficient. thing you do with an operation. Probably, pro probably something not for the sewer commission well, to actually... I know, but well, you say that, actually, but, all but, I'm but I, I, I understand yeah, your that's point. That's point yes. one. So we have three ways we can do it. One is do something about the FTEs, do some really good operations analysis and get people together. Not, don't fire them right now, you know, you let them go at their own rate. Um, and belt tightening, 1% 1 1 less than what the town spends in operating expenses, 1%. I've seen people have to cut 20, 30% to stay in business. 10%, you, I can walk through a department and get that, just take notes, don't even need a study. Or, or they have belt tightening and FTEs, or some combination of one and two above. I don't think we have a problem here. I think we have a management problem. I think we can come up with the money you need for this uh, project and not have to collect any fees at all. Uh, that's my opinion. Okay, thank you for sharing that, appreciate it. Yes, sir. James Yilly, 16 Furbeck Ave. I just had a, like, really one comment and one question. And someone mentioned that this is not really going to fix this, the problem. It's what they had mentioned. You can't get the oil out. You can't get the phosphorus out. So my question to you guys is, all these steps that we're taking and all this money we're going to put forth, are we going to be better off in the end as far as are we going to have stormwater going to be cleaner? Is it going to be better? Or are we going to be in a situation similar to the water where, in my opinion, we've now put tens of millions of dollars into a new filtration plant, new, you know, a bunch of different things, and my water still at home is not very pleasant to drink? Where will this all get us, or will we just be throwing more money because we have to, but in the end, not really be any better than we are now? The, the first five years will be mainly um, valuation. valuation of our existing system, valuation of our outfalls, valuation of water quality, and at that point, improvements will be made to the system to enhance the water quality that now we are discharging into whether it's the lakes and streams or a, a tributary to those lakes and streams. Um, so that's when we'll start starting to see some of the water quality improvements uh, with also with our stormwater regulations that we have in place for new construction. We have increased requirements for new construction, actually a little bit above and beyond the stormwater management gu guidelines. So with the, those two dot, with, the, with this and then the increase improvements to the, the, our existing infrastructure, we will see, see some water quality improvements. Okay. So starting year six, six and forward, basically? Right. I mean, so we will be doing some things, like we will do some drainage improvements as we see, as we incre also improve and maintain some of our existing infrastructure, uh, uh, detention basins, et cetera. Um, 
we will be seeing some, there will be some water quality improvements. Okay. And then do you anticipate, you don't have the figures now, but that in year six, that our the amount of money that's spent on this is going to go up dramatically? I wish I could say I knew. Okay. I don't know at this point until we actually, as I said, year four will not have a much better idea. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Riley. If I, if I could, just for the record, I, I would just like to dispute the fact that uh, our water quality is not improving, and I certainly uh, share the concerns of probably most everyone in this room when we have um, sediment um, that is sh uh, shedding off the inside of our pipes, and um, as we acclimated the system, there was some chlorine odor that, um, as we got our residuals up further out in the community, but... Um, undisputedly through our own internal analysis and uh, third-party laboratories, the water that is now coming out of the water treatment plant, um, to the credit of Mr. Tzeski and his staff, is 100% um, in compliance with um, all drinking water standards um, and is much improved over um, where we were uh, before that plant came online. Thank you. Yes, sir. I respect what you're saying, but I will respectfully disagree with you. I have in my house had to throw away three toilets and thrown away shower heads and out of my faucets and all my sinks. I have to pull the trainers out and clean that to remove the sediment and the manganese that can still continues to permeate through this whole system. Did, and did, it is awful. Did I? Did I? No, no, I, I respect what you said. You know, I know it meets all the drinking water standards because you monitor it out of the plant. But you go to some of the residences. I, I don't think you heard what I said at the beginning then. I did. I did. I heard okay, it. then you choose not to hear it. Yeah, you kind of no, I, right. I chose to hear it. But, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm sure. not being disrespectful, mm -hmm. and I said that right up top. Well, that sounds All right. I appreciate the same from you. Any, any, anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, sir. Come up. Come up. I know, uh, I, know I asked a Tell question us regarding Tell us your, your green. My name is William Barry. William. I live in Shrewsbury Green. Great. Um, I work at the Worcester Recovery Center and Hospital. I'm a mental health worker for the state. I know, I, I, I'm also a union officer, so I know basically where the members live. And there's actually quite a few that live in Shrewsbury. I mean, the bulk of our membership's in Worcester. But there's quite a few that live in Shrewsbury. Um, and when you were talking about reducing salt on the roads and stuff, we are considered essential state employees. We have to be at work. You know, we can't be like crashing into the trees or something. So, um, and I, I actually was a groundskeeper at Westboro for a while. And I know we used to use white salt and we got complaints from the nurses that they couldn't see that we were salting. So they put some kind of a, they switched it to a blue or a pink salt the next year. So that the nurses could see that you know that it that the it was blue and you know we had salted, um, but you know I mean those it I, I know you said Worcester is under a different tier or something, but shouldn't we be sort of trying to work with Worcester anyways, since a lot of the people here are probably nurses and you know mental health workers and I mean UMass and all those UMass in the Worcester Recovery Center and all those places. I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch of Shrewsbury people that work right in that thing. I mean, I, I've seen ponding right at right at the bottom of uh, UMass, right right as soon as you come come down UMass, right at that Plantation Street area. There's been ponding from those drains already. I've seen it myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I don't know if there's actually a question, but we yeah. do we do continuously work with the city of Worcester um, on various different th items, topics, uh, as we do with MassDOT. MassDOT actually owns that intersection. Yeah. Um, MassDOT owns Route 9, Maple Ave, uh, Main Street from the center of town, or from Maple Ave to North Bro, Route 20. So we work with Mass, both MassDOT and with... Uh, um, in the city of Worcester on various topics. I'm, I'm sorry, this, you know, construction and roads is not really my training. I, by by training, I was, you know, in culinary arts and food service, but, you know, I I know that there's plenty of people that reside in Shrewsbury and work up at that, up in those areas. 
So I don't see, you know, I mean, if we're not working with Worcester currently, we probably should be, you know. I, th I think that there is a lot of collaboration that's going. I, I think the comment that you heard earlier was that Worcester is on a different permit than we yeah. are, but 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 still, we're, both towns are working to to improve the, the the drinking water, and are under certain regulations for stormwater. So, from that standpoint, I, I, there is collaboration going on between. So the do terms. we collaborate with DOT as well, or how does that work? So we are in constant communications with DOT on certain items. Um, for instance, Route 9 is actually also the Lakeway Business District, which deals with the sidewalks along Route 9, which are in collaboration with DOT. So there are a lot of different organizations that work together on different items. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. One quick follow-up question. Do we currently um, enforce illicit discharges? Do we enforce illicit, illicit discharge? discharge? When we find them, yes. So there is no inspection currently? At this point, the town in the past has, has decided not to go into every individual houses. We will be under the new permit. We are obligated to start doing that. But in the past, the town has elected politically not to do that. So is there a... We, we, we have we good luck have, enforcing that. <laughs> yeah, right. we, we have. Uh, I mean, we TV. We have TV'd and smoke tested the yeah. sewer system. Yeah. We've smoke tested the entire town. Um, to be yeah. honest, we have to notify everybody when we are going to smoke test. So if they have a sump pump, they usually. Disconnect. So the new regulations will will include that. Well, we are required. We are required to do additional illicit discharging, and actually, that's part of the thing. It is, it's a political hotbed, to be honest. And, and the uh, uh, sampling that you need to do with testing would be at the outfalls or, or the water body? It will be the outfall itself, including all the interconnection points. No, not the water body, though. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Do you know of anyone we should be looking at? Thank <laughs> 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 you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, anyone else? Last chance. Last call. Yeah, back, yes, ma'am. Come up. Tell us your name and where you where you live. Okay. Hello. Uh, I'm Catherine Lynn. I live on 17 Van Ness Ave. Okay. So I have a few concerns. So when you set the rate at 5,000 square feet, what is the justification of you saying of that? Because you said the average of the houses is 3,200 square feet. There's possibly also houses that are smaller in square feet. So why did you put the borderline at 5,000 instead of a small increment like 500 or 1,000 square feet? We looked at a, quite a few different options, and we felt that, and in, in by comparing it to what a lot of the other towns have done in the past, we felt that the 5,000 was the most. We, we originally, when we originally submit, I'll uh, back up. We, when we originally were thinking of the residential, we were just going to do a one flat fee for all residentials, and then re fit, determining that that probably wasn't equitable after. Uh, internal discussions that, that it was better to look at a, a couple of tiers. So what we elected to go zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15 or over 10, mainly also so to keep it in line with the red, with the commercial. So the commercial was already set at zero to five or was looked at as zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15. So we felt that the residential would fall in, in where the residential and the commercial were equal at the same size. So for the stormwater constant fee, what does it account for? Because you also said there's an additional storm utility fee for the street sweeping and the basin cleaning. So what does the stormwater fee account for? That's what I'm wondering. So this, the stormwater fee includes our increase in street sweepings that we're, the town is obligated to do, the catch basin cleanings, additional drainage improvements, the detention basin maintenance, mo monitoring maintenance so and cleaning. So all that would be part of the stormwater utility. So you're saying the utility fee is under the stormwater fee. It's not an additional it's all, fee? It's, it's all one. It's all, all one. one. That's correct. Okay, all that's one. Fee. Yeah. That's, that's correct. 
And then also when uh, my house has wetlands, so does that include include as called impervious area because it's on a stormwater or no? No. 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 Okay. And then also, as just as a suggestion, because you can't control Mother Nature in a way that there's dry seasons and wet seasons, and we're paying in advance for a month for the stormwater fee. Is it possible to get like reimbursed by the end of the year if there's possibly a dry season or some sort of cost or no? <coughs> No, because all the things that we're obligated to do are regardless if we have a drought or we have this year where we had a plethora of rain. Okay. So we have to street sweep twice a year regardless. We have to clean our catch basins regardless. We have to do our maintenance, our detention facilities regardless of whether we have rain or not rain. We have to do the other monitoring, the wet weather, dry weather. Obviously, you can't do wet weather monitoring if it's not raining, but we're obligated to still do those those monitoring regardless if we have a drought or if we have rain like we had this year and then for the stormwater it doesn't because we've been talking about the filtration rate does that include the cost or will it be additional if there's like more expensive or extensive system that will be filtering the chemicals in the water uh you mean in the future mm -hmm. potentially but i don't know that at this we don't know that at this point okay and Four years or five years from now, when we actually have to do some sort of construction project or projects, technologies may change. Technologies change continuously in this field as phosphorus becomes more and more of an issue. Um, one of the byproducts of phosphorus is the algae blooms that we have at Lean Park or at Jordan Pond. That is one of the op one of the things that's caused by the phosphorus increase in phosphorus. So. Hopefully we can reduce the phosphorus. Some of it you can do by infiltration. Some of it we can do by mechanical means. Then, and then and in five years from now, there may be other methods. Okay. Uh -huh. And then for the stormwater, is this for like the whole town you're basing the price? Or is it like for certain like districts or precincts in the city? Townwide. Townwide. Town -wide. Yeah. Unfortunately, the town of Shrewsbury is, for all intents and purposes, 100% under, uh, under this permit. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. We've appreciated all your comments, and we will uh, probably um, take it <laughs> under advisement. Do we need to close the meeting? Yes. 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 To make a, uh, I make a motion that the public hearing is will is adjourned. Do you want to second that motion? I second that to motion close to the close the public hearing. Okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Can I just bring one thing up I oh, forgot? Hold on just a minute. Just, be, just oh. be, before I forget. Can't do it. <laughs> this was the 2003 permit. This is the 2016 permit. Just to put it in perspective. Oh, really? Yeah. Should have done that early. All right. Do we need a revote? <laughs> Meeting is closed. Thank you very much.